Hey everyone, let's talk about the truth about weight loss. The diet industry has always been rife with scams and gimmicks that range from simply a waste of money to downright dangerous. In the 1800s, for example, you could buy obesity soap to wash away fat. Cigarettes were also advertised to ensure a slim figure and they were quote, doctor recommended. In the 1960s, doctors and weight loss clinics dispensed amphetamine-based pills, commonly known as speed, leading to addiction and hyperactivity. The sugar industry even took out ads to suggest sugar helps with weight control. Looking back, we can see how ridiculous these claims and these products were. The sugar and the cigarette industry, they didn't care about people's health or even their weight loss. They were just trying to financially leverage the shame and the insecurity that had already been culturally instilled into people around their weight and their body size. Now, in 2020, similarly ridiculous and harmful products are marketed to us but we don't recognize that this is simply history repeating itself. The diet industry is selling us apps, gimmicky protein powders, detox products, ineffective supplements, and even appetite suppressant candy that promise permanent weight loss. But if these actually worked, then people would have lost weight and kept it off. As a body connection coach, I specialize in helping people permanently heal their lifelong food and weight issues. Something I hear all the time when clients first come to me is, Lauren, I have tried every diet under the sun. Keto, intermittent fasting, elimination diets, low carb, uh, Whole30, you name it, I've tried it. And what happened was it worked for a little while, I felt lighter, I felt good, I lost some weight, but then I lost my willpower and I gained it all back. Now, they think that the problem is their willpower. They think the problem is they haven't found the right eating plan or the right set of food rules yet, that they just can't stick with a routine. But the problem is not a lack of willpower. It's not even sugar addiction or a compulsion towards eating. The problem is that the diet industry has sold us three dangerous lies. And as long as we accept these lies as reality, and leave them unquestioned, then we are going to see our bodies and food as enemies for the rest of our lives, and we are going to struggle with food and weight issues forever. The first lie is that dieting creates weight loss. So dieting is any time we restrict the amount or the type of food we're eating with the intention of losing weight. Research comprehensively shows that dieting backfires. 85 to 90% of people will regain the weight they lost, and about two thirds of people will actually gain back more weight. So now you're wondering, okay, well, what do I do? I mean, I'm maybe overeating, I'm emotionally eating, I'm eating to the point where I'm uncomfortable, so how do I solve that without actually dieting? And I'm gonna be talking about that in a little while. The second lie the diet industry tells us is that you have to lose weight to be healthy. Again, the medical research shows a completely different side of the story. What we know from research is that yo-yo dieting, which is where you lose weight and then you gain it back and then you go on another diet, this actually correlates to a higher risk of type 2 diabetes, uh, higher blood pressure, and even an increased risk of heart disease, uh, especially for people who are in smaller bodies or who have lower BMI. Now, there is uh, this cultural idea that body weight or body fat causes disease, but again, the research paints a different picture. Uh, higher body fat is actually correlated, uh, correlation is different than causation, but higher body fat is actually correlated to a longer lifespan in some studies. So there's actually no data that shows losing weight improves your health. Although there is data that shows eating healthier food and incorporating exercise and more movement does improve all markers of health. Dieting also derails our mental health. It creates preoccupation with food. So you know that you're in this unhealthy negative mental cycle when the first thing you think about when you wake up is what you're gonna have for breakfast. And in between meals, you are thinking about food and planning your next meal. 
um, and calculating how much you can eat based on how much you've burned off. That's not normal, it's not healthy. What it does is it takes away our precious mental energy from other avenues where our creativity could flourish, where we could direct that energy and that, that mental real estate. The third lie of the diet industry is that you can solve a food problem with food. So the diet industry and even the wellness industry to some degree tells us that our food problems result from eating the wrong food in the wrong amount at the wrong time. Now I used to think this too as a nutritional therapist and I realized I could only get my clients so far with dietary and supplement protocols. The underlying reasons for people's struggles with food, especially their lifelong struggles with food, was a distrust of their body, a disconnection from their intuition, and making fundamentally unfulfilling life choices. And as a result, they needed to cope with food. They needed that emotional numbing tool or they needed a subconscious stalling technique with their food and their weight issues um, to keep them from growing in their lives. Food can't solve these problems because they are spiritual, emotional, and cultural problems. So now that you know the three lies of the diet industry, what are you supposed to do and how are you supposed to eat differently? Well, the first change to make is starting intuitive eating. This is an evidence-based paradigm and it gets you back in touch with your body's hunger and fullness signals instead of being chained to arbitrary food rules. It means giving yourself permission to eat whatever and whenever you want. That is a necessary step to healing your metabolism, breaking the diet mentality, and showing your body that you aren't in a famine. I know this concept might sound terrifying and horrifying, and some of you think, oh my gosh, if I did that, it would be like running off a cliff and I would never be able to dig myself out of that hole. I would be stuck in such a terrible cycle, overeating certain foods and just eating unhealthy foods. I know it might sound like that at first, but this paradigm is thoroughly evidence-based. And what happens is actually your body recalibrates. It realizes, oh, I'm not in a famine state. And your body is so wise. She or he has such a wisdom inside and intuitive eating allows you to get to a place where you're naturally craving a variety of healthy foods and you have the freedom to enjoy the fun foods, the desserts, and the play foods without overeating, without feeling addicted to them. The second big piece in healing your relationship with food is working at the spiritual and emotional levels. Okay, so I don't help my clients stop emotionally eating, for example. What I do is I help them address the factors in their life that are creating the emotional distress in the first place. So I love the words of the modern day mystic Charles Eisenstein. He says, instead of taking away someone's medicine, instead take away the conditions that make that medicine necessary. This is the level we need to work at to really create permanent change around food and weight issues. Uh, instead of trying to willpower away the coping mechanism of food, you know, whether that is overeating or over controlling food, instead address the conditions in your life that are making a coping mechanism necessary in the first place. So doing that really deep internal spiritual and self-growth work, it's a lot harder than simply trying another diet. And there's there's not that much money in it for the diet industry, which is why those businesses aren't gonna tell you that very simple and intuitive truth. So if you want to start your intuitive eating journey and start healing your relationship with food, I have two resources for you. The first is my book, The Invisible Corset. This is coming out in January, although it is available for pre-order right now. So you can go to invisiblecorset.com where you can pre-order it from all major booksellers and on that website, I have a pre-order gift for you. It's a $50 value, uh, an online course called Body Reconnection 101. And in that course, you're going to get a lot of tools, two of which are gonna be particularly helpful to your journey in healing your relationship with food, um, a hypnotherapy um, recording that will help you get tuned into your body's intuition, and also an EFT video EFT is also called tapping. It's an energy medicine modality. It's really powerful. And again, to help 
reconnect you to your body's intuitive wisdom. So that's one powerful resource, uh, that course and the book. And then if you want my personal help on your journey to heal your relationship with food, I would love to work with you. I am accepting clients into my Food Without Fear program. It is an eight-week group program where you're also going to get one-on-one time with me. And we do life coaching. You'll get hypnotherapy. You'll get energy medicine. You'll get um, subconscious uh, tools to really address those deeper levels in your life so that the symptoms of food and weight issues just disappear. This is a very potent, transformative program. Uh, As you can see, if you read my past clients' experiences in the program at foodwithoutfearprogram.com. So on that website, you'll also see an option to uh, book a free breakthrough call with me if you're ready to move forward. If you take away one thing from this video, let it be this, uh, your food and your weight issues are symptoms. And if you try to fix a symptom, what happens is you end up going around in circles, right? You just keep trying diet after diet and it doesn't get you anywhere new. And so in order to go deeper on your healing journey, okay, you've got to change your perceptions and actually address the problems at a different level of consciousness. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.